very happy to be here with Sean from La Sportiva. First of all, welcome to Crested Butte. Back home. Back home. I only, lived here, I only lived here for two years, but when it feels that? like home. Uh, so we left in 2015. My mom lived here for 10 years. So we came back over here a lot. We got married in Crested Butte on Scrubs Ray to Sunrise and <laughs> threw a big party in her backyard. Right. Fished all my friends out of her bushes. We really have to work real hard to try to find any kind of connections around here with Crested Butte. It's so funny. We were just up like, talking about the panel session, right, with Chris Davenport and McKenna Peterson, and they're both just talking about, you know, this being their first comp ever. And then you got married on Scarp Ridge. And so yeah. I guess it just keeps – people have spent some time around here. So it's back in place. It just sucks you in. Huh. Um. Well, we're here to talk about a couple of boots in particular, and that's probably going to lead us into some broader conversations about just where, frankly, the kind of sport and activity of ski touring is going and the rest. And so I'm actually really looking forward to kind of get into the weeds a bit on this. Uh, we have two boots sitting here just to your right. Which would you like to start talking about? Yeah. So let's start off with the Scorpia CR2, which will be releasing in fall 2022. So the Scorpius uh, gets the BOA treatment for 2022. It's going to be a awesome lightweight touring boot. It comes in a little bit over a kilogram at 1,190 grams in a size 29. So definitely playing in that lightweight realm that's going to ascend very quickly. Where this boot excels, is in its ability to drive bigger skis with confidence. So it has a carbon reinforced shell and cuff that does give it some stiffness and lightness, but it allows for a little bit more progressive flex than using a solid carbon cuff. The integrated tongue combined with the BOA system creates this really kind of dynamic fit that wraps the midfoot really well. That's certainly an area where Sportiva shines is in the foot retention. And then it also helps to combine the shell with the cuff to really inspire confidence on the downs. Just to clarify, you said the weight was 1,109 in a size 20. Sorry, 1,190 in a size 27. Okay, in a size 27. Um, okay. And so we were talking a bit about the fact that a lot of companies actually will give their kind of stated weight in a size 26 or 26.5. And you were saying, being a schemo dork, <laughs> you have gotten pretty good that you your uh, understanding is that typically it's about a 40 gram weight gain. It's generally about 40 grams in this, in this category as you go lighter and the materials go lighter. It'll shift maybe more towards 20 grams a, a shell size. Okay. So now we need to kind of qualify, I think, some things. So if you've got Schemo as your background and you're talking about this boot can drive some pretty big skis, what do you kind of mean by that? And I'd be curious if you have like kind of some weight spectrums or ranges for like in terms of like what's a big ski? So I would say in this, in this category of boot, it can drive some larger skis with confidence. So... What I mean by that is really just in relation to other boots. As you go with boots that have more heft, a more progressive flex, you're certainly going to have a little bit more confidence on the downs, but this boot holds its own for its weight category. So I would say driving a you know relatively lightweight 100 underfoot ski is going to be pretty comfortable with this boot. It's really going to play well in that 95 to 100 range where a lot of backcountry tour, tours are looking for a ski, also obviously going to perform well with a, a 78 or, a, or an 85. Okay, so this is good. We're pinning you down on this, and you've given a nice, clear answer. So thinking that boot in a 95 to 100 millimeter wide ski or narrower, and then weight ranges. What, yeah. what so, we'll throw out a kind of ballpark just to help people think about. So skis are getting really light in that category, yeah. but you know, in that 95 to hundred, you know, in that like 1200 to 1900 range, 
uh, you know, for like a 170 ski, I think this, this boot's going to perform pretty well. Okay. That's yeah. a pretty broad range, but we'll yeah. accept the answer. 1200 grams yeah. to 1900. Yeah. It's and that's a lot of skis. It's, like a, a lot of skis. And I would say this is going to perform well on, you know, a ski that's going to charge through some denser conditions. And it's obviously going to perform well on a ski and match up well with a ski that is very light and focus a little bit more on uphill performance and sacrificing some of that durability. Sorry, sacrificing some of the durability? No, no, no. So the, it's going to pair well with a ski that is lightweight, that is focused on uphill performance because the boot is light as well. So you see, you know, some people may be getting on a lightweight ski that's, that's really made for that uphill performance and sacrificing some durability, and they're, they're getting on it with a, a heavier boot that maybe isn't quite made to pair up with that ski. Yeah. So talk sure. about who you think this boot is for is this for people really serious about getting uphill fast and they are you know on strava and the rest and they're wearing heart rate monitors or is this for more of a recreational person like how where are you where would you locate the end user for this so as someone who spends a lot of time in race gear i am definitely skewed towards the lighter side of the spectrum. So I'm always trying to talk friends, family members into using lightweight gear and preaching the benefits of it and telling them that they'll be surprised at how well it skis. Someone coming from the other side of the spectrum from the free ride side of the game is, is obviously going to have some different opinions. I think that this ski, this boot's going to perform really well for skiers who are looking to go further into the backcountry and still have confidence on the downhill. So people that are looking to do two laps of their local spot instead of one, people that are looking to get out further for some ski mountaineering objectives without really wanting to sacrifice that, that downhill performance. It's also for someone that wants to get uphill pretty quickly on the resort that's doing some, some uphill skinning but wants a boot that can perform off-piste as well. And one of the things we've been talking about is this whole 1,000-kilogram ski boot thing is just becoming more and more of a thing, yeah. right? And we are seeing other companies kind of trying to move into this category and space, and um, it's going to get competitive here. You know, it, it has been. But I think it's only we're getting more folks coming to the table. And I think that's just really interesting when we start thinking about where is skiing going? And when you talk about, you know, the person who's looking to get multiple laps in or getting out further, I think that's what a lot of the industry is looking like and, and kind of trying to build product toward. Yeah. So here you go. I think it's it's making lightweight gear that can perform well. We saw it with mountain bikes where you you, know, you had really lightweight mountain bikes where you were really sacrificing downhill performance. And as the technology has come around, you have lightweight gear that can still hold its own pretty well in the rough stuff. And you're starting to see that with, with skis, with boots as well. It is, you know, kind of interesting to look at the differences between North America and Europe here, you know, Sportiva is an Italian, La Sportiva is an Italian brand born out of the Dolomites and ski touring is a way of life in the Alps and the Dolomites. People have been doing it forever. And, you know, a hundred underfoot ski is, is huge there. Most people are on, you know, 85s, 95s, hundreds at max. And I think North America is kind of slowly catching on to that trend and, and realizing how fantastic lightweight gear can ski. And that is just, just to provide some context. That's why, especially if we're thinking about that European skier, this boot might be viewed as that burlier offering. I don't know if I would, yeah, I don't know if they're going to look at it at that as a burlier offering, but as a, as a capable boot. As a capable. Yeah. I mean, I would never describe this as a boot that, you know, is really, really going to charge downhill, but it's a boot that does ski well for its weight. And again, I think the interest in terms of where the North American market is, 
it's actually skewing more toward boots like this as opposed to say away yes. from boots like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're seeing things getting lighter and lighter. We ready to talk about the other boot on the table? Definitely. So this is going to be a boot that's going to charge a bit more on the downhill. So this is the Vanguard. This is a current inline product. It's a very intelligently designed boot. It has a um, pretty interesting cuff that's uh, a V-shaped cuff that has scissor-like construction that really wraps the foot when you step into it and gives a lot of retention and confidence when skiing downhill. Again, that cuff is uh, integrated with the tongue to really kind of connect the, the upper and lower shell. So this goes up in weight a little bit. It goes up to 1370 for a 27, but still a couple hundred grams lighter than other boots in the category. Um, it has a huge range of motion, which really helps on the skin track, especially when you're getting on poorly set skin tracks that are very steep. Having a little bit more articulation there is very helpful. So it's 60 to three degrees of rotation um, and it, it works really well with that V-shaped scissor-like construction. It's very, very smooth. The power strap is also integrated with the, um, with the top strap here. So it makes for easy transitions um, and much simpler going from ski to walk mode or vice versa. Yeah. Saves a little weight too. So that boot, for people watching this, what are some of the comparable boots, closest competitors in the category, would you say to that, to that? So the Scarpa Mistrale, for one, definitely going to go, go up against that boot, uh, the Salmon MTN. And where I think Sportiva can really hold its own is with the integrated system that it's using that provides a lot of foot retention, both on the skin tracks, your foot's not moving around, you're not getting blisters, and really helps connect your foot to the boot and helps it to inspire confidence while skiing. And are you putting a stated last on this boot? Are we not talking about last numbers? Uh, it's, it's, it's funny about this. Sure, right? it's a 1025. So kind of in that, uh, in 102. So sort of in, in the middle, uh, definitely widens out in the forefoot and then really wraps around that midfoot. I would say that's kind of the, the classic Sportiva boot fit. Yeah. Bit of a wider toe box, which is ironically so trending in like the running shoe world, right? But so, because it's funny, I'd say sometimes skiers will hear 102 last. Oh, that's way too big and voluminous for my foot. And yet... In the running world, everybody is really, a lot of people are embracing that kind of more room up front, let the foot flex, just let's lock in the instep and heel. So yeah, it's amazing how much control you can, most of the control in the foot comes through wrapping the instep over the navicular. That's really where you're going to get that control and precision from. I think once you slide your foot into one of these boots, you can really kind of understand the, the fit really wraps the foot well and that's again one of the areas where the boots really shine tough question how much hand wringing do you think people will do about which of these two boots they should go with or do you think it's not going to be a confusing thing like you know what i mean in terms of their respective performance obviously we know their weight differences but do you expect there to be a pretty clear I'm, I'm this boot and I'm over here. I see it as being somewhat clear. I think this is certainly going to skew more towards this gear that is focused on downhill performance. And this is going to skew more towards this gear who's focused on long days, pushing their limits as far as distance and vertical gain and still wants that performance on the, on the downhill. I think people are going to start wrestling with what direction they want to go, but 
with where I see the market right now, I think a lot of people have kind of parsed themselves out between these two categories at this point. Anything else before I let you go? I think we covered most. Did I do okay? 